you're obviously doing Plurilo and you're doing Dot Hacker. Which one are you trying to focus on the most? Well, in the last year, when we did that one Dot Hacker song, it was sort of, um, it was still 2020 and, and um, it was very much a, a remote thing. You know, everyone's sort of in their own place, kind of, we had come up with a, with a way to do things where I would write, I would write it and then I would send it to Clint first or I would send it around to everybody, but Clint would then start working on it. And then he would sort of communicate with the, with the other two, with Eric and Jonathan. And I was sort of done. Like once I wrote it and sang it, I, I kind of relinquished any control. And we found that was kind of a cool, a cool method of working different from the past. Cause um, I, and I had never done that. I'd never written something and sort of just let, let it go. Um, and then we, we tried to do more after the, the song that was released and it just didn't happen. Like, it, I don't, you know, Clint and I were of the, of the belief that we, we were, we were all really specific about this new kind of method of, of songwriting that we were trying to, trying to explore and, and kind of had to explore because of the pandemic and everything. And just, uh, it just didn't work out as well <laughs> as we thought. So what um but at the same time clint and i were both very excited about working together again and doing some stuff and and i just i came up with an, a whole album's worth of stuff so um at, over the course of the last couple of months it's kind of just morphed into what will be the next plural one album i think um so yeah what what uh, i i don't think the 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 dot hacker um the four of us, kind of, we were we were just having a hard time communicating, and it was just we didn't have time right now, to, or we we didn't have the ability to get into a room. We probably could now, but Jonathan isn't even living in LA at the moment, so it was just getting harder yeah. to work together. So Clint and I decided to just kind of shift all those songs over to what you know, my little solo name, and he's essentially just going to be the producer of it. Okay, and I mean, and that's because I I per, I didn't oh, no, care what no, it was no. called. I just wanted it done. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, so, like, pl- is is that plural one or plural alone? Just kind yeah. of like a... yeah, it's pl- it's plural one, and I guess because you can say plural plural, like you, the word alone is in there. It, yeah. To me, it was kind of like uh, I guess <laughs> in, in multiple ways. But yeah, I, I say plural one, and I um and I thought because it kind of highlights what those two words are to go against it and smash them together. Mm. Um, I thought that I, it, it was, it was kind of like a, uh, it's, it's the kind of thing you come up when you're really um, stoned or something, but it, I wasn't. <laughs> but it, me, every time I try and tell, tell someone about it to me, it sounds like the kind of thing that you come up with when you're, you know, sitting around with your friends, passing a, some, you know, passing one back. Forth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then obviously, I mean, like <laughs> just kind of, so Dot Hacker potentially is a bit dead in the water at the moment, but kind of going back way, way, way back to the start of the whole thing. How did you guys like decide you were going to do the band in the first place? Cause you're all very kind of busy, talented musicians doing your own thing anyway. So yeah. Uh, um, that it had always been my dream to have a band. I, and I just, you know, like I, I grew up just being obsessed with bands and band, the band members and what each person brought to a particular group. And, and, uh, and I just never had that for whatever reason. I mean, I, I, I grew up in the suburbs of LA and I, you know, I had little bands in when I was in school, but I was the drummer. So I guess once I started playing other instruments, I just, I never, found the right people to start something with and and i started touring with other bands and bigger 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 bands and all this so the before i knew it my whole 20s was sort of taken up playing touring with other people so um when i was in that band gnarls barkley for uh a majority of 2006 uh i met i met clint walsh and uh and then he and i just you know we became kind of fast friends and we sort of would commiserate in you know hotel rooms all over the world about neither of us ever having that experience of being in bands that we really liked with friends where we kind of all just care about each other and like being uh in each other's company on top of playing music together so um i knew jonathan i'd met him a few like a year or two before that um 
I saw him. He was, I'm friends with some of the guys that play in that band Hella from Northern California. Yeah. And uh, Jonathan, yeah. Was, Jonathan was playing in a, in a kind of expanded touring version of Hella. And then uh, Clint knew Eric and Clint played with Eric in the motels and um, maybe a couple other things, definitely the motels. And uh, so he told me about Eric. I told him about Jonathan and I thought, yeah, these two guys will probably sound great together as well. And uh, we, we sort of smashed it together. And then the minute we did that, um, Clint and I had to go back on tour with Gnarls Barkley. And then very shortly after that, um, the drummer of Gnarls Barkley at the time stepped aside and then Eric took his place. So now, now it was three, three members of the newly formed dot hacker going on tour with Gnarls Barkley and leaving poor <laughs> Jonathan behind. And it was really sad at the time. Um, Cause that would have been a great bonding experience if we could have all done that touring gig. Um, but um, it didn't happen. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, and fair, so so that's how we started. That's how we started. Okay, fair play. And then plural, uh, plural one. That's you and Clint predominantly doing like your guys' thing. Well, that um, plural one to this point has been pretty much just me. Okay. Uh, I've had I've had Jack Irons play. I mean, basically, any time I had free time from the Chili Peppers, I wanted I wanted to make an album. And at the time, I had Dot Hacker. And even though we weren't really able to maintain a full band schedule, um, I, I tried the best I could to make it a real a, a functioning thing. And and I, you know, those guys are some of my closest friends. So we just like being together anyway. So it never it was never weird. But I think because of the fact that it mostly revolved around my availability and my schedule. I mean, one of that's one of the big reasons. It just it it was it was a little strained often. So yeah, um, yeah. So then after the third Dot Hacker album, after kind of seeing the dynamics and the certain people, just certain people not seeming like they were enjoying it, I just thought, okay, well, okay, I have time again. I have time now from the Chili Peppers. I want to do another album, but I guess I won't do it with those guys. I'll do it on my own. So that's how Plural One began, and. Um, and Clint is involved now in the the one I'm sort of working on now because it it, it essentially was it was written to be Dot Hacker. So um, yeah, so this will be the first one that Clint is um, a sort of you know kind of equal member of. Uh, he played a solo. He played a, a lap steel solo and some other instruments on the song Shade off the first Plural One. But yeah, Plural One is essentially just me with some guest musicians like uh, Jack Irons plays drums on a fair amount of stuff. Uh, and then Eric from Dot Hacker plays on one with Eric Avery on bass. So yeah, it's mostly just um, guest musicians. What's coming out with, with Plural One? I mean, because we might as well talk about that. I mean, that seems to be where it's at now. So, you know, what's... what's yeah, um, uh, that is... Um, yeah, that that's, you know, because it started out sort of in this we're going to do it remotely kind of way. I just wrote the songs and sent them all to Clint. So he's kind of been slowly working away and putting his spin on them. And then once he's kind of gotten it to a place that he likes, then we start collaborating on it. And, and I guess that's changed over the course of the year too, because um, we, uh, you know, it's been a slow sort of realization that the dot hacker thing isn't going to work right now. So so yeah, I mean, it's just essentially turning into a plural one album that'll probably come out later this year. I, I was always kind of, once I started making albums on my own, I didn't really have to worry about other people's availability or their opinions about, <laughs> you know, the mix or anything. Uh, I, I just started saying, I, I, I want to be one of those people that make an album a year. You know, I, I, I love that about the, you know, the 60s and the way the way it used to be i mean now it seems like there's sort of a business schedule that you you sort of adhere to and it's revolving it revolves around touring and singles and you know don't yeah, oversaturate lots your, and lots and lots of singles yeah and, especially with spotify yeah and i just Right. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and I, I, I there was kind of a lack of that for a while. I kind of liked how in the 60s, maybe there was there was kind of an emphasis on singles and there were songs that maybe didn't go on the album and they were still as important for it seemed like for a while in the 90s or, you know, a little my, like when I was growing up singles, like a single that was just dedicated. I, I always liked that about, you know, I thought 
I mean, I remember Oasis had the song Whatever, and like, and then they didn't put it on, on an album, like those kind of things. Like that seems to harken back to the past as well. So I don't know. I just I like the idea of being as prolific as I can be, and uh, um, yeah. So so this year. I've sort of got this new album that Clint is essentially producing and hopefully that'll be out this year. And if for some reason it, um, cause I also know that it does make sense to put out something when you go on tour. So if, 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 um, smarter music, you know, kind of business minds convince me that it's yeah. unwise to put out an album this year when I'm not going on any sort of tour, then maybe I'll try and put out a simpler, more, one you know like acoustic type record or something i definitely have yeah, to yeah. release yeah. an album a year or i will feel i will feel like i didn't hold true to my <laughs> i did it two years in a row so i have to stick it i have to do it for at least three years yeah or four years before i can before i can abandon my mission well there we go there we go and then like touring in general what's because obviously you will not be able to play all the instruments on a tour as much as you'd like to so what's the yeah. composition for that that's a good question. I haven't, I haven't really put a lot of thought into that because I was going to go on tour opening for Pearl Jam on their next arena tour. And it just made Casually sense to do it that. by myself. Yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> that was, well, um, that was, that was going to be my first touring really. Um, eight days after I left the Chili Peppers, they, they invited me to come on tour with them and sort of, uh, you know, sing some background vocals and, and, you know and because i was gonna oh they invited me to open and then since i was there i was gonna sing some background vocals and play a little bit with them but that tour never happened so um i didn't have to think about it for a while so now yeah. that that's getting closer i mean it's it's i think it's only recently that we've learned for sure that it's not gonna happen this year the arena tour yeah. it'll happen next year i'm sure so i i have a little more time to think about it but yeah i mean and for that i still think it's gonna be just me and uh I I was about to go on the road with a really wonky setup uh, that, that <laughs> probably would have gotten me into a lot of trouble on stage. So I think I'm going to simplify that a bit. Um, yeah. So I, you know, I, I really like the idea of doing things. No, I, I don't think an enormous amount of people know my songs at all. So, you know, I, I would like to, you know, figure out a way to play them as directly as I can and maybe just you know don't I don't have to achieve every sound that's on the recording as long as I can sort of come up with a version that doesn't bore me yeah, yeah. then maybe yeah. then maybe then maybe it'll connect with other people and then at some day at some point down the road I would love to play with other people um but I haven't I haven't begun to think about that because I just haven't had to because touring just evaporated <laughs> last year so, yeah. Yeah. so it's funny timing to put out records uh you know for the first time like i'm starting a solo career right when there's no discussion of playing live yeah i mean i know a lot of artists currently kind of did hold back and now they seem to be dropping a lot of stuff uh kind of literally past week or so there's been so much that's been dropped but uh anyway yeah, I, I, I expect everybody is going to go on tour at the same time. It's going to yeah. be, be overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, anyway, but um, so you obviously were in the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, if anyone in the audience knows that band, you know, uh, they're kind of, you know. <laughs> but basically, do you think you're going to work with any of them in the future? I mean, because you were doing stuff in the past like accompaniment before you became like the main guitarist so are you planning on doing anything um well I, there's no plans at the moment although chad and i still play together we do some recording together um and have done uh in the last couple of months we've done a little bit of work together and uh but the other guys i mean i think they're they're pretty busy working on their own record that you know has been has been uh you know they i think their schedule was you know slightly put off by the pandemic so i think you know they're just sort of making uh they're sort of making a record that they started a while ago so uh, yeah I, I don't think anyone has any 
free time. You know, I, uh, yeah, I, I'm still on pretty, pretty good terms with everybody in that band, except John. I don't speak with him anymore, but um, yeah, the other guys, I, you know, still talk to. I mean, I, I would always be happy to play with them. They're still friends of mine. So, you know, I, I never really, I never really shirk at the idea of playing music with friends. Yeah. I mean, respect. I mean, you know, obviously it is the way it is, but I, I will just quickly say that I think one of my, fa- literally one of my like top 10 favorite songs ever was, uh, was the sides when you were doing like Ataxia back ages ago uh-huh. with, with John. That was, that was a solid song and the drums on that were like brilliant. So fair play to that one. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Yeah. I, I, uh, I like those albums. I, I haven't heard them in a while and I put on, and I put on a, a kind of a mixture of the two of them not long ago, or a couple months ago. Um, yeah, you know, I, I uh, John and I will always be friends in some way, and stuff, but we, we just don't really speak <laughs> anymore. Uh, you know, we kind of. Yeah, no, I know, mean, I guess yeah, it's just no, kind exactly. of strange to, to, to be in that band and do, do the same thing and just, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I but, uh, see that. So, but then kind of your own instrumental background in terms of, I mean, you obviously started off as a drummer. You learned a bunch of other stuff. Uh, like the vocalist thing, were you self-taught? Were you, did you try and like go to lessons on that? Or did you just say, screw it, we're just singing and that's what it is? Yeah, I, I just, when I was a kid, I just always sang and I always thought, oh, I can sing. I can carry a tune and it's not hard for me to sing along with things. And I thought it was that simple. Uh, I, I went... Um, there was a, a great vocal teacher that that the chili that Anthony and John both saw kind of more for touring and to learn how to warm up and just learn a few um, a few more technical tricks mm. to help them sing healthier or like sing use their 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 voice in a more um, you know physiologically uh, correct way that would help them make it through shows and stuff and so i saw him a lot and he helped you know with little things here and there but other than that i've never i've never been a trained anything so yeah i mean and i still i mean i'm at this point now i don't know if it's age or what but i i kind of a couple of years ago i feel like i really over sang when i mean, it was dot hacker was doing a couple shows and we rehearsed a lot and i And I just I feel like ever since then, I I walked away with a compromised voice where if I if I sing too much or sing too hard, I I feel like my voice gets gets lost pretty quickly or or, or that my the high voice that I sort of lean on a lot. Yeah, gets gets compromised quicker than I remember that happening. So I I have a a little bit of a, a fear about it, like when I was on Chili Peppers tours in the last couple of years, um, I was at a couple shows into every leg. I mean, I just from singing a lot, I would, uh, I would just find that my falsetto, like the break between full voice and falsetto was really hard to get. And every night we would open with can't stop. And th- the first note I have to sing is right there. So yeah. it, it really, ah, you know, like it really hitting that high note was always kind of a crap shoot for me. Yeah. And it was such a, bummer because it was nothing nothing that i was ever used to in the past like these holes in my voice i mean i guess that's the problem when you start singing high like that from a young age i just always did it was it wasn't something i ever consciously did i just you know i listened to the beach boys or whatever it was when i was young and i just always gravitated towards that higher voice and um and now as i get older or I, if i overuse it it's just some it's the first thing that goes so it's, it's something that i have to learn to work around or whatever but yeah and it, and definitely like it's one thing you notice with with your vocals is that it is it is very high uh, so <laughs> yeah yeah but anyway so kind of you yeah, i would say definitely on the more experimental side of of music in general like it's it's brilliant stuff and it's definitely experimental And so I'm just curious as to like who you were listening to growing up that you really liked and saw inspiration in that potentially led to kind of your own music. Um, Always. I mean, the Beatles and the Beach Boys were always my favorite bands as a kid. And those were the bands that I that got me obsessed with the idea of being in a band or writing songs or, you know, sort of 
they were the bands that or the the those were the songs that first showed me how how much a song could make your emotions kind of uh run wild and then as when i was younger i mean i i got into you know rocking bands like guns and roses and you know led zeppelin and stuff like that and then after that there was all the music that came out of seattle when i was about 11 and 12 which is crazy for me because i'm playing with the, some of those people now <laughs> and um but then i you know and then i sort of worked backwards when i was about 16 david bowie became my favorite and you know like all the bands that would have been considered new wave i would listen to a lot joy division and and the smiths became favorites of mine and um yeah i mean at the end of the day every and, and then in the 90s i was really into bands like uh blur and uh radiohead and you know bands like whatever and, and any anybody like a like a damon alborn or tom york or someone like someone who's been in a band that i listened to at those pivotal sort of age 16 17 and you know any of the bands that i generally loved and cared about as a young person I just sort of always saw in them that they were always trying to reach for new heights and, and kind of reinvent themselves with every outing. And I, you know, I guess I just, I, I always had such a low self-esteem and a lack of confidence when I was younger. And I just, I, it took me a long time to convince myself that I should be doing this at all because there are people that do it so much better than me. So why should I bother? Mm -hmm. And then I, and then, at the same time, I had, I had such an, it was anathema to me to, to sound like anyone else. So I, I, if I ever wrote a song that sounded too much like, if I was, I always found that if I listened to Elliot Smith too much, everything I wrote started sounding <laughs> like him. So then I'd have to, I'd have to say goodbye to Elliot Smith for a couple of months or a year or whatever. Cause I, I just, if, if, if I'm doing anything that sounds like something else to me, I mean, everything you do is, is derivative of something and has influenced by something but i i think i finally you know i finally came up with a little mixture of things and a little mixture of influences and and tastes that that you know might be my own my own thing and my my singing voice is as much as i never liked it wound up to me finally sounding okay that that's not, it doesn't necessarily sound like anyone else that i know right now i mean so I mean, I guess that's the most, the thing I'm most proud of is that when I make songs and make recordings, they actually kind of sound like me and they, you know, they're obviously influenced by, like, I, you know, I, I, I was never a piano player and I'm still not really not a piano player, but I love writing on piano. So I, uh, you know, I think, you know, people like, like watching people like Damon Albarn or Tom York, people that I grew up uh, wa watching in a guitar band, you know, kind of you know, I'm sure Damon always wrote on piano. I, I don't know about Tom, but I just, you know, I, I was like, I, you know, I love playing piano and I, I love writing on piano. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind yeah, of funny you, know, you should say that, though, because like, obviously, the like the Red Hot Chili Pepper albums that you were in had the most piano out of all of them. So, like, which is, which is funny because that's not necessarily my doing. Flea also at the same time got really into writing p on piano. So, oh, yeah. I, uh, yeah, because he studied music in the period before I joined and, and after John left that time. Flea went to USC music school and he took piano lessons and he was trying to expand his, his, uh, understanding of music theory so he you know like when in that whole two-year period where they weren't working and i wasn't in the band yet he was just playing piano constantly and he'd really put the bass down for a while so when i joined he had uh he was writing on piano a lot and i actually i mean i it was it was cool that he was doing there was such i mean he's you know he's unlike any other you know, he comes up with such great things on bass and that's such an, a part of the, of the band's sound that I, you know, it was always, it was always kind of, oh. <laughs> what, was what was that? Well, the air raid along. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a broke, it's the Broken Arrow Fire Department here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, oh I, I was, I'm driving around in circles looking for a coffee place that I went to yesterday and I thought I would just stumble upon it and I, I'm not finding it, but this is great anyway. because I, um, I will find it. Um, yeah, Flea wrote a lot on piano and, and after a while, I, 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 cause it was always kind of a funny thing. It's like, so he writes the song on piano. 
who's going to play it? And then we wound up getting Nate Walcott to join us on the road, which was great because he's a dear friend of mine who I love being around. Um, but yeah, there was all, it was always kind of a thing with, uh, with writing on piano in the Chili Peppers because it was hard to accomplish it live. And I really think the, the magic of that band is, uh, is about the interplay between the bass and the guitar you know, and, and, you know, the kind of steady, funky driving drums. And then the, you know, the unique vocal that Anthony can't help put on it. Cause no one is, no one sings like him. And yeah, uh, yeah when there was writing on piano, I always thought this doesn't sound like them. Yeah. But it wasn't me. It wasn't really me. I mean, I did write songs on piano for the band, but a lot of those didn't really get used. It was, so a lot of the piano work, in the Chili Peppers during my time was was flea actually. Well, I mean, it's it's kind of funny that I mean, I think a lot of people would agree that it's definitely the guitar and the bass that that play off each other just so extremely well. Um, and I mean, obviously, recently there was that cover that um, that both Flea and John did of Not Great Man, which was it's literally just like Flea on the bass and John on the guitar. And it absolutely just kills it. It's great. And I know in, in, in like everyone is saying, oh, you know, chili peppers are back and all that stuff. But, you know, it's it was very good. But anyway, um, that's aside from the point. But yeah, I mean, kind of you would be one of the definitely like around now, one of the one of the largest musicians I would say ever. I mean, you know, you were like 12 years, the youngest guy in the Rock Hall of Fame and, you know, like what does music mean to you? That's kind of my last question is like, what is, what do you aim to do through music? Um, well, I mean, like I said a minute ago with the Beatles and the Beach Boys, I mean, I guess there was just, when I was younger and I sort of started to notice that I was, I just couldn't, I guess it, it's, it's, a, it's fairly, magical and it's unknown I, I don't know i mean it's just the way music can can play with one's emotions and 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 sense of purpose and kind of be this driving force in one's life i mean if you don't play music and you're just a fan and you listen i mean it, it's just as powerful but i mean if you start playing and you start figuring out how the magic is made a little bit i mean um there's nothing more satisfying to me than than coming up with with a chord progression or you know coming up with a melody on top of a chord progression like just to me i still i mean i was saying to someone yesterday i still don't know how i learned i know that this probably isn't everyone's experience but i still don't know how i learned to do anything musically i just sort of play and i can do it and you know i, I definitely have limitations and i'm not the most disciplined practice uh practicer when I you know I just like to play and um and so what music means to me is this it, it is I mean it, it just always was this kind of force that could bring about change change in your own emotional state you know usually for the better uh um but then, you know, of course, since the 60s, let's say, or um, and then obviously any of the music that people in the 60s were influenced by, there was there was there was uh, there was so much so much life was centered around music. I mean, I mean even before recorded music, I mean, uh, blues music and, you know, music was a way people expressed their innermost emotional you, you know kind of the universe of their emotions and i and i just and i just feel like that's something that will never tire as 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 boring as music has become or as homogenized and sort of samey as recordings have started to sound and how you know there's it's very hard to do anything original these days i mean it there's still something that music can do to the spirit and and uh and be and just be the, the the guiding kind of compass in in your life that I just think is remarkable and I it's never changed for me from 
again, like I can be as negative as you can imagine about certain music if I hear it and it doesn't register with me. I'm trying to get better about that because, you know, one shouldn't be negative really about anything, I guess. Um, there's no point in that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just, it, it's so powerful. I mean, Bob Dylan said this thing in that movie that they did on him, No Direction Home, I think it, um, where he said, and this is something I think we don't necessarily have as much of these days, but it, I'm sure it still does to young people like it did for me. I mean, the music that you listen to kind of taught you how to live Dude, through music and through the lyrics to a song or the, the kind of rebellious nature that, that can't help but sneak into a lot of music. Uh, you know, it really, it really shapes the culture and it really shapes the, the people that are getting interested when they're young. And so I think it's the, it can be such a powerful, so, I mean, I, so, you know, just melodically and, and technically, I mean, it does something for my, my insides when I listen to music. So it's, it's important on that level, but then just culturally. And I think that's what we have to fight against, you know, maintaining the importance in the culture and not just letting the thing that's safe and the thing that's uh, going to get you the commercially viable. Yeah. Going to get you the, the most streams. Like that's not the music that we should always be making. I and mean, there's nothing wrong with trying to get people to listen to music, but I mean, it, there was a point where, where music had more of a, more of a hand in shaping the world we live in. And, you know, if we're not careful, we're going to be living in a very boring corporate safe world so yeah i mean music music is important on so many levels cool. i mean i know for sure when you go to these especially bands like chili peppers or pearl jam you go into a room uh with between 10 and fifteen thousand people a night you know that they all don't agree on everything when it comes to politics or religion or whatever it is but for some reason they're all really into the songs that are being played right now so i mean i mean let that be a lesson that people can agree on things i mean you know so i think it's it, it, music is so important on so many levels cool well thank you very much josh i hope you find your coffee shop and keep up the good fight yeah for good music thanks for coming i'll on. keep up the good fight for this coffee <laughs> <laughs> there we go okay best of luck all right yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time. Bye.